I'm Brad Ross with Pasture Management Systems. We're here today looking at a few fencing techniques. Um, we're actually on our demonstration site down here at the Sunbelt Ag Expo in Moultrie, Georgia. You know, one thing when you're constructing and building a fence, the foundation of that fence is your bracing system. You know, you, that's, that's one point you do not want to cut any corners on. You want to make sure that you use at least an eight foot uh, end post as well as your brace post here. So like I said, we've got an eight foot post that's in the ground here about three feet. And when you're, when you're building a, a fencing system right here, a bracing system, it's all working together to help support this end post and, and hold it up so the wire does not, you know, pull that post and get it to lean. So when you get, you know, get your end post up, you're going to have your, your brace up over here. And when you put your cross member in, normally what we're going to do on this end of the post is we're going to use a five inch brace pin. We will drill into this horizontal post drive that five inch pin about halfway in and then drill a hole into the vertical post and, and stick our horizontal up in there. Well then on the other end here, we'll use a 10 inch brace pin. So we'll get this, this horizontal post will be up here against our brace post. We will drill then all the way through the post into this horizontal and we'll drive a 10 inch brace pin in. Once you get to that point, you're, you're normally going to leave that brace pin sticking out just a little bit. That gives you something to rest your brace wire on. And this is sort of what ties it all together is hooking up your brace wire. You're going to go around the bottom of your end post or corner post, come back to the top of your brace post over here. And then when you tighten that down, whether it be with a, you know, a tightener, ratchet style strainer, when you put tension on that, you're pulling the top of your brace post back towards that end corner post and this horizontal is helping support and hold that up. So like I say, when doing your braces, that's definitely something you do not want to cut corners on. And ideally, you're, you know, how far apart does our brace post need to be from our end post over here? Typically, you want to have a brace that is basically twice the length of the height of your fence. So if you've got a fence that's uh, 48 inches tall, which is four feet, you want to construct and build an eight foot H brace. So hope that's something that'll help you guys out when constructing your H braces. Once you've got your brace built and you get your wire installed, this is a five strand, 12 and a half gauge, you know, high tensile class three electric fence wire that we've got up here. When you go to make those connections and you want to hook this fence up, obviously we want it to be as conductive and you know as hot as possible. So anywhere that you start or stop your fence, you want to be sure to hook all these wires back together. You know, all your line wires and all that's going to help jump that voltage over. So what we've done here is, uh, you know, sort of simulated, let's say if we were coming under a gate right here, you want to be sure you've got this top strand, you know, hooked down to the second, to the third, fourth, and fifth strand. You want them all tied together if you are running, you know, a fence that is that is an all hot wire fence. So you can see our jumpers here where we've made these connections um, to, to continue that power over. And then let's just pretend, like I say, we have got a gate here, for example. We're going to basically take our double insulated underground cable and we're going to sort of trench it in, come up on the other side of the gate, hook onto that bottom wire, and then there again, we'll jump them all back together. We want that current to be able to free or flow as freely as possible. Um, so our fence will be, you know, as hot as, as it possibly can. And over here in the corners, um, if, you, if you make a 90 degree corner, let's just say this third strand from the ground, for example, we've terminated it here with the end strain insulator. Well, then we want to make a connection there as well to be able to jump it over to our third strand on the other side. So like I say, that's something else that making those connections that will help keep your fence as hot as you possibly can. When you've got your wire installed, obviously we've got to be able to tension that wire and get it tight. And one thing that I like to do, and, and there again, I, you know, I've installed some fence uh, and I like to be able to come back and put my tensioners, put my tighteners in the middle of my pull. I know I see some on the ends, but the reason I like to come to the center is let's just say that we've got a run that's uh, you know a thousand foot long, for example. If you come back and put your tensioner in the center of that pull, now instead of trying to pull a thousand feet of wire, we're actually pulling 500 feet of wire. Um, you know, we're pulling 500 feet from from both directions back to the center to tension our wire and tighten it up. 
So there are several different styles of tighteners out there on the market today. Um, you know, there's some that you can use a, a fork prong type handle to, to tension and tighten up with. Uh, this particular strainer has got a square shaft on the side here. You can put an adjustable wrench on there. You can use like an 11 16 wrench and turn it so you don't have to have that special fork tool to be able to tension that up. Something else that we've got right here, uh, this is called a wheel tightener. Um, a wheel tightener, you can literally take a half inch ratchet drive and stick in there and turn it. And once you get it tight, you stick this pin back in here to hold the wire. Also, you'll see here we've got a tension spring. And a tension spring, um, you know, some folks choose to put them in, some folks do not. But uh, a tension spring is kind of designed to help give that wire some give. Also, if you're in a climate where you, you see changes between hot and cold, um, you know, when things get hot versus cold, they're going to contract and, and expand and all that. So this tension spring sort of helps take up some of that uh, expansion right there and helps keep your fence tight.